Today we are talking about the notorious Eco Diesel. So I'm a full-time heavy duty diesel mechanic and I'm going to be looking into this Eco Diesel, sharing my thoughts on it um, and comparing it to my 5.7 Hemi gas truck and taking this thing for a spin and doing some acceleration testing in comparison to the Hemi and finally giving my thoughts on why or why not um, you guys should buy the Eco Diesel. So stay tuned. First of all, this is obviously the 3.0 um, Eco Diesel. V6. It's a dual overhead cam, uh, common rail injection system um, with a single turbo. Um, so that's the engine we're talking about today. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of the Eco Diesel and may even already own one. So we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So first of all, the good. Like all diesel engines, they are very fuel efficient, as shocking as it may be to some people. The reason being is because diesel has more energy um, per volume than gasoline does uh, meaning that you need less of it or you need to burn less of it to get the same amount of energy output um, so that's one of the big reasons why diesel is more efficient than gasoline so you are going to see a big fuel economy difference between the eco diesel and let's say the hemi the hemi is going to be much less fuel efficient compared to this thing and that's why a lot of people buy them. Another reason why people tend to like diesels is because they are very torquey. Lots of low end torque with diesel, um, which is the kind of exactly what you want with a pickup truck, which is why you find a lot of, um, you know, heavy duty pickup trucks with diesel engines because they have that awesome low end torque, which is really good for towing. 420 foot pounds of torque, um, which I believe is 20 more than the Hemi. I think the Hemi's right around 400 foot pounds. So you are gonna get your fair share of low end grunt out of this diesel, which is exactly what you want. Another nice thing about this diesel engine in particular is the sound deadening. Um, I bet you most of you, if you didn't know there was an Eco Diesel in your Ram 1500, you wouldn't even notice. Um, they tend to be extremely quiet in these trucks, uh, which is nice. There's quite a bit of insulation um, because diesels tend to have a very knocky, loud noise just because the high compression ratio um, of which they like to run at. When it comes to tuning, a lot of guys like to tune their diesels and rightfully so. Um, a lot of diesel engines, especially with that turbo, um, have a lot of tuning ability to it and this engine is really no different. There's quite a bit of aftermarket tuning software for these engines. So that is another really nice bonus. And the last thing I'll kind of touch on um, which is nice about this Eco Diesel is despite being um, way more fuel efficient, the tow rating is actually um, pretty significant. So this thing can tow a maximum of, I think it's 9,200 pounds, uh, depending on what configuration or truck you get, but that is still pretty cool um, that you can have such a fuel efficient truck um, and still be able to tow a good load behind you. Now let's start getting into some of the um, gray areas of this truck. So with all modern diesel engines, um, with the new emissions protocol, they're going to have to have after treatment systems. With that comes a bunch of different um, components and a bunch of different maintenance that the driver or the owner should be very aware of and probably have knowledge of how it works if you guys are going to be thinking about buying a diesel in this day and age. So to wrap up this whole after treatment regen thing, <laughs> if you will, what's just important to note is that this truck is not like a gas vehicle. There's a little bit more knowledge and know-how that you that needs to be understood when buying an eco diesel or any modern diesel for that matter. Here's the kicker, in my opinion. I feel like this truck is marketed to people living in the city. And usually trucks in the city are just disgusting on fuel economy so people don't want to buy the v8 hemi because they're just going to be paying for crazy amounts of fuel so they say oh let's get the eco diesel it's a lot more fuel efficient perfect but what tends to happen is those people drive let's say 10 minutes or eight kilometers to work every day and what's going to happen is the diesel engine and the after treatment system are not going to get hot enough 
They're not going to get up to operating temperature where they can burn off that soot at an efficient rate. And what's going to happen is you're going to clog up those filters continuously and the truck is going to ask you to drive this thing for hours just to burn off the diesel particulate filters. That's kind of an oxymoron in my eyes. If you are going to buy this truck, I feel like you should be driving at least 30 kilometers a day, probably more, probably closer to 50 um, to really get you know, the temperatures all up to spec and just to keep this thing performing at a much better rate. So now for the ugly. Um, this Eco Diesel has had quite a few issues with the engine itself over the years. Um, I think the biggest one, at least in my opinion, that I would be concerned about is the bottom end issues on this truck. I guess the crankshaft mains tend to fail, um, which is kind of a huge issue. Um, I guess when Chrysler um, warranties those failures, they just slap a new engine in because I guess there's not much you can do. If the mains fail, the cranks junk and you know, I guess they just call the rest of the engine junk too. So that is a big concern. Now there's a couple theories as to why that's happening. Obviously um, Chrysler Fiat hasn't released that many details, if any. They tend to keep that stuff quite secretive. So if you guys are planning on buying a used eco diesel, pop that hood, let this thing run, rev it up a little bit. And if you think you hear some, you know, strong knocking, I would just leave it right there. The next biggest issue on these things is timing. So the right upper exhaust cam um, tends to fail on these trucks, specifically the gear on it. Um, and attached to that cam is the high pressure fuel pump. Yeah, obviously once your timing goes out, it, it's gonna ruin a lot of things. It's just a big no-no. And sometimes an engine can't even recover after having a timing failure like that. Some people are believing that because this engine is not necessarily a heavy duty engine, in fact, it's somewhat of a lighter spec diesel, um, when you really put some uh, pressure on that high pressure fuel pump, it tends to just strip those gears. Now the last ugly thing that I'll touch on on this engine is the emissions issues they've had over the years. I believe in 2019 uh, Chrysler Fiat settled uh, with the EPA uh, over a emissions issue. I wouldn't quite call it a scandal um, like Volkswagen, but nonetheless I believe they paid somewhere north of like $650 million to the EPA in fines. Um, so basically in 2019, it came out that these trucks were actually not as efficient as they were saying they were. And the EPA investigated them and claimed that they were indeed not as emissions friendly as Chrysler was claiming. Um, so what happened is Chrysler made a recall for all these eco diesels basically emissions software recall. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, these engines are very tunable. And so in my opinion, what Chrysler did is they detuned the crap out of this engine to make it meet those emissions protocols. And there are major um, complaints about people going to do the recall. And then the acceleration is just not what it used to be. Chrysler promised these things are gonna be super high torquey yet have tons of power and be fuel efficient. Well, after this recall, it kind of seems like some of that has been lost. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing for a spin and I'll give you my feedback on what I think um, about this engine compared to my Hemi truck. All right, guys, let's fire this thing up. So as you can hopefully hear, this thing is pretty darn quiet for a diesel. So we'll jump onto the highway here and we will see if this acceleration does really have a bit of a lag to it. Oh yeah, whoa. Okay, so there is totally a turbo lag on this thing. And there shouldn't be because this turbo is so small, it should be pretty direct power. Um, from pretty low RPMs and that's crazy noticeable compared to me driving the Hemi which is a much more smoother power band right from the get-go but regardless I mean I guess once you get this thing going like and the turbo spooled up properly
Yeah, she does rip okay. And then, so we're cruising at highway speed here, 100 and, I don't know, 10 kilometers just about. And uh, you would never even know this thing's a diesel. So I'll give it to Chrysler. This thing is really smooth, really quiet. Um, kind of impressed, actually. It seems like from a stop, there's this interesting lag. And I think that's what people are complaining about um, in regards to the acceleration after the uh, emissions recall for these trucks. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, so you put your foot down and it's just not there. It takes a second or two. So I can totally understand what people are are uh, talking about. But I mean, other than that acceleration thing, like it is a very smooth shifting truck. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, it just drives nice and smooth. You'd never even know it's a diesel. So yeah, I mean, in terms of a rolling acceleration, there really is no turbo lag or lag in general. It, it kind of reacts like you would expect it to. Now I can see if you're towing a trailer, how that lag and acceleration would be um, exaggerated pretty significantly. And this is kind of where you want to be driving this truck, guys, is on the highway. Um, that way you don't have to replace your DPF filters after like a year or two of driving around the city. All right guys, next up, we're gonna take the old Hemi for a rip here. This is my truck. And we're just gonna do a little comparison to the old Eco Diesel when it comes to that acceleration and just the smoothness of the truck. Let's pull in the street here right away. Oh yeah. It's crazy how different um, the acceleration does feel. The Hemi is a naturally aspirated V8. Um, so it's gonna have power pretty much um, at all ranges of the RPMs, um, low, high. So when you put your foot down, it's gonna have great throttle response, which is what you'd expect. There's a big difference when it comes to that acceleration, um, which is kind of impressive. I didn't, I didn't realize how much acceleration difference there would be between the Eco Diesel and the Hemi. Now, in terms of top end, the Eco Diesel did have quite a bit of power up there. Um, you could really feel that torque just kind of pulling you back into the seat. Um, so it'll be interesting to see when I put the hammer down on this truck, if it has that same kind of top end pull to it. Probably not as significant, but we'll find out here in just a second. Nothing like uh, putting the hammer down on a nice cold engine, really good for her. All right. I mean, I would say probably not. I think that Eco Diesel had a little bit more bite on that top end when that turbo was fully spooled up. Just a little bit more torque. Like it just, it pulled you back into the seat a little bit more. And now maybe that's because the acceleration at the beginning was so sh that once it hit you, it just felt more powerful. Where this truck is a much more continuous gradual acceleration and there's no big lags or all of a sudden um, acceleration points it's just more of a continuous nice sturdy band of continual acceleration so we'll head back on the highway here give her another pull in terms of a rolling acceleration the eco diesel was just fine there was tons of throttle response and everything no issues here um, Like, yeah, it's just, it is just such a um, steady band of acceleration on this Hemi. It's uh, it's so smooth. It's, it, it is a really nice accelerating truck. Well, the Hemi lived up to her name. It is just naturally a very smooth, well-balanced V8. Tons of power, great acceleration band. It's what you expect. But where it does kind of lack in comparison to the Eco Diesel is obviously the fuel economy and a little bit of that torquiness that you get at the high end with this truck. In conclusion to this video, as a diesel mechanic, here's what I would advise anyone who's looking um, to buy an eco diesel. If you are not going to be driving this thing maybe 40 kilometers a day at least, 
I would honestly steer clear of this eco diesel. Not that it's a terrible, terribly designed engine. Yes, it has flaws, but so does the Hemi. I've talked many times about the Hemi lifter failures. You know, every engine is not designed perfectly. There's going to be issues, some more than others, um, but there's always going to be cons and pros to each engine. But when it comes to this engine, the cons are um, much more pronounced, let's say, because you can avoid them. This after treatment system is not meant to be run five kilometers a day to work and back. It is just not what it's meant for. You're gonna to have tons of issues. I can say firsthand, um, working at a heavy duty diesel shop, that like 50% of our check engine lights are used to do with the after treatment system. You know, component fails, drivers not driving it properly, the filters are clogged up, and those filters are not cheap. And yes, under warranty, obviously that may be covered, um, but once you get outside of warranty, you're gonna run into issues. And even in warranty, it's gonna be a pain in the ass, constantly going back to the dealer, because you got check engine lights, you're gonna be told to do regens, and when, you're, when this truck tells you to do a regen, you're gonna have to drive the truck for a couple hours to burn off all that soot that you've built up from not driving it enough. That's my two cents. If you guys are gonna be driving a good amount every day, then yes, this truck may be a good fit for you guys. Overall, I think the Eco Diesel has its place, but you need to know that it is a little bit more complex to maintain, and there is some criteria that needs to be met in order to get the full benefits of this engine. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my little review here. Um, if you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you like stuff like this, Ram stuff, Hemi stuff, maybe even think about sticking around and hitting that subscribe button. We'd love to have you on board. Um, anyways, enough of me. We will see you guys on the next freaking video.